What's going on, Grilling Grills Nation? How's everybody doing out there? Chef Drew coming back at you with our Christmas Around the World series. Today, guys, we're visiting, visiting Nigeria. How cool is that? We're we'll making a chicken stew that's very kind of indigenous to this area. We're we'll going to talk a lot about the research I did and how it ties in to American cuisine here in just a few minutes. But before we get into it, Guys, we love traditions around here. We love exploring new things, not just what we have going on inside the walls of our studio and the events that we partake in. But we love hearing about other people, what they like to do, their holiday traditions, their family stuff. So please, in the comments, let us know. It doesn't have to be food. We'd love to see some recipes. We'd love to see what you guys eat around the holidays. Maybe some fun stuff you guys get into, certain way you decorate the Christmas tree, certain stuff you guys like to do as a family. I don't know. If you have a tradition, we'd love to hear about it. Let us know. So let's go ahead and jump in here and we'll kind of talk and cook all at the same time, but let's get started. First thing we have, guys, I'm gonna turn this thing on. See, it's the holiday season, it's being nice to me right now, okay? This, this guy is not always nice, but it must be having a little bit of the Christmas spirit turned on for me today. First thing we have, guys, is just a couple of chicken breasts. Because I did a lot of research on this recipe, you can use chicken breast. More common than not, though, they're using chicken thighs, they're using bone and stuff. I just wanted to do the chicken breast today. And a lot of the recipes that are, <clears throat> excuse me, the ingredients that I chose for this recipe, there's literally 9 million variations of this. The holiday Christmas tomato stew is the standard in Nigeria and actually a lot of Western Africa. The variations, however, are intense. They're all over the place, which just goes to show you how integral that this uh, particular dish is to the area because there's so many variations, kind of like, you know, jambalaya down south. There's certain things that definitely are going in there million ways to do it okay same idea we'll get into this kind of fusion or marriage between southern food and african food here in just a couple minutes after we get some of this stuff kind of going all right guys we're gonna go super simple today we have our oil heating up here this is vegetable oil again we don't want to use olive oil i preach about that all the time I'm not going to bore you during the holiday season all right salt and pepper we're not going to use any binder we're just going to generously <coughs> season this with kosher salt and black pepper all right Nice and generous. We're not going to be adding a whole lot of salt to this dish, guys. Okay, it's got so much flavor on its own. So I'm going to go ahead and really heavily salt this because actually a lot of the salt in this chicken is going to be the majority of the salt that goes into this dish. All right, so we're just going to sear it. There we go. Searing that oil there. It's nice and hot. There we are. Again, generous seasoning on the bottom. I know it looks like I'm going overboard, but I'm really not. Okay, we're going to season this one more time with salt. And that's going to be it, guys. Okay? Perfect. Set that right there. And what we're going to do is sear it, let it get nice and seared on the outside. And we're going to take it and we're going to put it on this plate to hang out while we build the rest of the stew. And then it's going to go back in there to finish cooking, almost like we're braising it. All right? So traditionally, this is like a one pot meal. This that's is why a I'm doing one pot meal, and that's what I love about it. Okay? This is it's meant to be one pot, it's meant to be simple, and it is, guys. Start to finish, if I wasn't yapping and yapping, this whole thing takes about two or three, well, that's an exaggerated, five or six minutes to fully put together and get kind of up to the boil and simmer. Then you just let it go. And what we're going to do, I'll show you in a couple minutes. Traditionally, you can finish it on the stove top, but if you want to cover it, throw it in your silver back at 325 degrees and let it go for half an hour to 45 minutes. You totally can. That's what we're going to do today. All right, guys, so as that's continuing to kind of go, we're going to look at everything else we have here. We have some onions, okay? We need one whole onion. Doesn't really, really matter the type here. I'm just using a standard um, white onion. Relatively thin slices. Doesn't matter. And they did call specifically for slices. They didn't want it chopped. They didn't want it minced. They just wanted thin slices of onion. Going to come through. All right, great. Let's kind of mix this up a little bit. All right, and the whole thing about this, guys, is we want it to be hearty. We want it to be sturdy, okay? This is a very, as, as they typically are in any cuisine from anywhere in the world, these are meant to be hearty. They're meant to be rustic. They're meant to be filly, okay? That's what we want. So we're not overly worried about just getting these cuts perfect. Same thing with these sweet potatoes here. I just cube them up nice and easy, super simple, all right? Got a nice sear on one side. We can see a nice sear on the other. And while that's kind of doing its thing, I want to get into what is really cool to me about how this translates to American cuisine as well, okay? So African cuisine is super, super, super prevalent, especially in the southern United States. It's very checkered and unfortunate past there. We all know why that is. But 
That being said, out of something so horrible came something actually quite beautiful in the form of food. So, when we're thinking about Southern cuisine, we're thinking about one-pot meals, like our jambalaya, okay? Like our crawfish etouffee. We see a lot of rice, which we'll see here in just a few minutes when we put this all together. Common things, okay? Uh, Black-eyed peas. Very, very common in the South. Wonder where those came from. Give you two guesses, you only need one. We have sweet potatoes, okay? We're using onions as a base, all right? You see a lot of carrots, and you see a lot of bell peppers, and you see a lot of things of this nature, all coming from African cuisine, brought over, and then kind of homogenized and brought in by folks that were down there. It just all kind of became one. Currently known today as Creole and or Cajun cooking. Okay. It's just really cool to see the the like breadcrumbs from one culture to another. Oh, it's got to trace back everything. So so, and, and I just think that's why one of the things that I love so much about food. Also, guys, in case you're interested. There is a difference between uh, Cajun and Creole cooking. Cajun cooking actually came first. I'm going to put these into sweat, okay, guys? And what I mean by sweat is we're just going to cook them until they become translucent. A little bit more oil here. So Cajun cooking came first, and it's that one-pot cooking that we so familiar with, like your jambalaya and all that good stuff. Essentially something very similar to what we're making today. Not the ingredients, but the ideas. Everything has to fit into one pot, all right? Simply because when they were coming up without food, a lot of the people were either living in dwellings where they didn't have much space, or they were out in the woods, they didn't have a whole lot of utensils. They needed to cook it in one pot because one pot's all they had. That's your Cajun uh, kind of cooking, that's when we first start to see that African influence. As the time goes on, people start to make money, things start to get uh, more fluid down there, especially unfortunately because of the cotton trade, we start to see Creole cooking. Creole cooking is simply nothing more with a little bit less ingredients before refinement, okay? So we see maybe using more than one pot, it's a little bit more delicate. It's the food of the aristocrats. A prime example of our Cajun food is your standard jambalaya. Prime example of your, of your uh, Creole food is going to be your crawfish etouffee. Same ingredients, two different applications, all the spices, and a lot of the basis for those foods coming from Africa. So I think that's very cool. All right, guys, we have our onions in here. If you notice, I put a lot of salt and pepper in there. That is the last time we're going to salt and pepper this. All right? And also, if you'll notice here on the bottom, guys, when we sear that chicken, we have some little brown bits that's called fond. We want to get in, get in there and scrape it. All right, don't waste it. That's where so, so much of our flavor comes from. Just delicious. All right? Those are looking good to me. Let's get to it. We got a little garlic. Your recipe calls for six heads. I'm just going to use this puree and get it close. All right? Definitely we'll make sure we cook these onions first for a minute so we don't burn this garlic or this ginger, okay? I call for a couple of tablespoons of freshly grated ginger. We're going to use this puree. We want to have that essence of the ginger, guys, but we do not want it to overpower. It can overpower very, 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 very easily. All right, stir that in. You can really smell that king and like mm -hmm. that. Aromatics are kind of coming out. Ginger and garlic together, one of my like favorite combinations oh, of flavors. Totally. All right, we're gonna let that continue to go do its thing. One thing we're gonna do first though, actually let's just go ahead and do it now. We have our chicken, as you can see when I cut into it, it's going to be raw, that's okay. All we wanted to do was give it a quick sear. I'm gonna cut this into essentially thirds for when it braises down, also fits better in the pot that way, all right? It's raw, it's fine, don't worry about that. We're gonna put that in to finish cooking here in just a few minutes. Now the rest of our ingredients. We're gonna put in some chicken stock, one cup. All right, I like to put this in first. It's kind of my base. It also helps pick up all that beautiful fond we were just talking about off the bottom of that pan. It keeps that flavor. The next thing we're gonna do, guys, we're gonna put in our sweet potato. This is one large sweet potato cubed. It's not have to be anything super precise, the best you can do it. Two cans of black eyed peas, rinsed and drained, guys. Very, very important that we're rinsing and draining these, okay? Cool. Now, next thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna take our chicken, I'm gonna plant it right here on top, as we can see, of all those beautiful vegetables and peas, potatoes that we have down in there, those onions. Okay, guys, next thing I'm gonna do, believe it or not, I'm gonna put about a quarter of a cup the peanut butter in here. Isn't that cool? All right, so it acts as a thickening agent. and it also just lends an incredible, incredible, incredible amount of flavor. Lastly, we're gonna put in sorry, one whole 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Crushed tomatoes, very important. Now, still not quite done. 
Get a little bit of thyme in here, about a tablespoon or so. All right, dry thyme. You can garnish with the dry thyme at the very end if you so desire, you definitely don't have to. Okay, that's finished. Put about a teaspoon of cayenne. I go a little bit heavier because I really like mine spicy. Okay, you can use any spice or any pepper here that you want. Cayenne just very traditional, packs a nice punch, it's not overly aggressive. There we go. Okay guys, next thing we're gonna do is just gonna give this a nice little stir. All right, how to incorporate this stuff together. We're making sure that chicken is staying submerged because it's gonna braise off. All right, look at that. Now, what we wanna do, guys, is bring this up to a boil. Soon as it comes to a boil, we're gonna reduce it down to a simmer. We're gonna cover it and we're gonna let that low for half hour to 45 minutes. So imagine this came up to a boil, went down to a simmer. It needs to do this before it goes into the silverback. It's very, it's a must. As soon as we bring it back down to the simmer, we top on into our silver back here at 325 degrees for anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, the chicken will be done after 30 minutes, but if you want it to really break it down and kind of disintegrate, get all nice and kind of broken down, almost resemble a pulled chicken, the longer it goes, the better. Once it goes in here and it's covered, you can't leave it in there too long. It's just going to continue to braise, the flavors are going to melt, and it's going to be delicious. Now, with all of that is said and done, Grilly Girls Mansion, let me clean out my mess here. We're going to end up with something like this. Guys, we have a little bit of brown rice. This is super traditional, okay? Don't need to tell you how to cook brown rice. Just do it. It's right there. If you don't want the rice, that's fine too. And then look what we have here. This beautiful, delicious, authentic Nigerian holiday stew. Look at how beautiful that is. That rich texture, all those vegetables, those sweet potatoes cooked through nicely but not overcooked, the green beans, the onions, right on top here. You can do it on top, you can serve it with the rice or on, a rice on the side, you can do it with bread, whatever the case may be. Get one more little spoon in there. Oh yeah. And then just because, we're gonna give this a quick little thyme garnish here, just on the top. And we're eating Christmas dinner in Nigeria, right here from Michigan. Pretty cool if you ask me. That is awesome. Next, guys, we're going to do a drink today. It's called the Chapman. We did a lot of research on this. Everybody kind of has their own version. Couldn't really figure out where it comes from, but it's a non-alcoholic drink, guys. We do a lot of cocktails here, and we have been showing a lot of the Christmas cheer in this series, and we'll continue to do so. However, today I want to do something that's kind of fun, a little bit outside of our normal, okay? The first thing we're going to do is look at the ingredients. We have some orange drink, okay? In this case, Fanta, you can use whatever. We have some Sprite, lemon, lime, anything is cool. Orange juice, some bitters, okay? The recipe calls for grenadine. That's what's in here, it's just uh, cherry juice. If you wanted to make this a cocktail, okay? If you, this is great for the kids. You know, they got, uh, you got the adults coming over there, hanging out, doing their thing. You want something fun and interesting for the kids to have. This is a great option. However, you wanted to turn this into something the adults might be interested in during this time of year, sub out the grenadine for cassis, and there you go, okay? We have some limes and some garnishes here for, uh, or some limes here for garnish. All right, so we're just gonna fill our glass full of ice. Ice first. This is kind of like a Shirley Temple from- It's like a Shirley Temple, exactly. Because a Shirley Temple, all that is, is your grenadine and your Sprite. Uh, but we're just adding a couple extra things to it, and I think it's really, really cool. All right, guys, so that's our ice. And there are proportions here that just kind of fly by the seat of your pants. One thing I loved about this drink when I was looking into it, uh, <laughs> everything was different. I thought it was so cool how there were so many variations of uh, the Chapman, this drink, so many variations of the stew. I don't know. I, just, I was super intrigued by this whole process. Uh, all the countries that we're going to be visiting during this series have been fun to do, but this one I found just to be very interesting. I don't know, cool stuff. And I mean, you're taking something that we all have a pretty decent idea of or have had something really similar to it in the past and, and showing where it came from. Absolutely. It's one of the coolest things about this series. Is we oh. can kind of see the crossover between what they do and what we do and, and where that uh, melting pot kind of came together in America. Totally, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Oh, last but not least, I have a little bit of grenadine here. There we are. A little bit more on this side. All right, guys, I'm just going to give this a nice stir. And believe it or not, I did, I did not put too much grenadine in there. Seth could be extremely generous with it. If we were doing the cassis version, the adult version, 
This thing calls for like, a, for a full batch, it calls for a couple of cups of it. So they want you to go heavy on it. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get a little bit of our cucumber here. There we are. Just kind of throw that in, boom, boom. It says to go directly in, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. We have our limes and there we are. Dominic, let's try this thing out, I'm super excited. Cheers, man, Merry Christmas. Dude, that's good. That's really oh, that wild. That's wicked good, guys. So if you're looking for something awesome and doesn't have any booze in it for the chickadees to enjoy, give this one a go. If you're like, hey, I want to have some fun this Christmas, I want a little, I want to jazz it up a little bit, switch out this for the cassis, and you're ready to rock and roll. All right, guys, that's it from us here today for this particular uh, episode, as it were, of Christmas Around the World, this particular one being from Nigeria. Super, super cool. Stay tuned for more. And again, guys, in the comments section, please let us know about your holiday traditions, your favorite family recipes, the favorite activities you guys like to do. We love to hear about that stuff. And it's kind of fun as a community to come together during this holiday season and share all the things that make it special. Until the next time, everybody, on the smoke, and we'll see you soon.